Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about your personal brand, who it is that you are, how others see you, and how maybe you can improve your brand if you'd like. Now, just to make sure we're on the same page as to what a brand is, at least what a brand is for our purposes here today, what I want to do is I want to show you an image, and I want you to just think about what it is that comes to mind when you see it. So here we are, this Las Vegas sign. Now, I'll be honest with you. When I see this, the first thing I think about, that ad campaign of theirs. You know the one. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I would tell you that my wife, I think she probably thinks about some of the fine dining, some of the great night shows. There's certainly some nice shopping. I know she likes that. Depending upon the time of year, I think we also think about the weather. The point is, we see this image, and things just instantly start coming to mind. Well, for our purposes today, your personal brand is what people think of when they think of you. And I want you to know, it's really not so much what you say about yourself. No. It's much more what others say about you when you're not even around. So, for example, let's say that one of you was going to leave the room and the rest of us were going to start to describe you. We'd probably talk about what it is you like and what you don't like, what you're good at and what you're not so good at, how you treat us, how you make us feel. Are you a hard worker, someone we can depend upon? Are you honest? How do you look? All these things and more go into making up your personal brand. Now, I think this is really interesting. You build your personal brand based on the decisions and the choices you make. And those decisions and choices you make, you know what? That's who you are. That's how we see you. That's your brand. I like this quote that's up on the screen. I am who I am today because of the choices I made yesterday. Now, I would say, given that, if you like the general direction of your life, you kind of like the way things are going, I would say the odds are you've probably been making some pretty good choices. Okay, so we looked at an image and we thought about what it is that comes to mind. What I want to do now is I want to introduce you to a person, and I want you to think about what their brand is like. Okay, the person's on the screen. This gentleman's name is Bill Daniels. Now, if you're not familiar with Bill Daniels, you should know that Bill was a cable television pioneer. But really what he was is just a remarkably successful businessman. In fact, by the time he passed away in 2000, Bill had amassed a billion dollar fortune. And he ended up leaving almost all of it to this organization that now bears his name, the Daniels Fund. Okay, so I told you Bill was really successful, very successful businessman, but you know how business can be. Even when you're successful, there can certainly be some difficult times. And well, that happened for Bill. In fact, about 40 years ago, he went bankrupt. Yeah, he experienced some really difficult financial times. Here's what happened. Bill owned a professional basketball team in Utah called the Utah Stars. And while the Stars were really good on the court, for whatever reason, they weren't so good at earning money. And it got so difficult that during the last season, in the middle of the season, Bill had to shut it all down. He ran out of money. He couldn't afford to pay the players. He couldn't afford to pay the vendors. All of a sudden, those tickets that the season ticket holders had purchased, the tickets were now worthless. There were more, no more games. So Bill, he packs up. He leaves Salt Lake City. He goes back home to Denver. You can imagine how he felt. He felt like a failure. He felt like he let everyone down. Well, slowly but surely, he started to regain his financial footing. But it took him five years to recover. You know what he did after he recovered? He left Denver. He went back to Salt Lake City. Bill had kept all the contact information for every season ticket holder, every player, every vendor, 
And even though he was under no legal obligation to do so, he paid them all back. Every penny he owed them, plus 8% interest per year for the five years he owed them the money. Who does that? Now, you know what I love about this story? I love that Bill Daniels took his worst professional moment and he turned it into his very best. He turned it into a moment we're talking about 40 years later. I don't know about you, but that inspires me. Imagine somehow taking your worst moment and making it your very best. Now, I really hope that I never face the professional adversity that Bill Daniels did. I really hope I don't. But if I do, I just pray that I have enough character and conviction to respond in a similar fashion. Because I tell you what, that's the kind of man I'd like to be. Now, as it relates to Bill Daniels' personal brand, I never got a chance to meet the man. I mentioned to you that he passed away in 2000. But you know, I've talked to quite a few people who knew him, and they knew him very well. And without exception, they told me that man was known for his integrity. In other words, it was absolutely part of his personal brand. Now, as it comes to your brand and to my brand, I really feel like integrity needs to be the foundation of our personal brand. It needs to be the foundation of who we are as people. And when you think about a foundation, for example, maybe the foundation of your house, don't you want that foundation to be strong? Sure you do. Well, if integrity is going to be the foundation of our personal brand, is there a way we can strengthen our integrity? I believe there is. Because I believe our integrity is a lot like a muscle. And every time we make a decision or a choice where we remain true to our values, our beliefs, those principles we have inside of us, I believe we strengthen that integrity muscle. So, who here enjoys a night out at the movies? I think most of us do, don't we? But man, can you believe the price of candy? Pretty tempting, really, when you think about it, to, to sneak some in. I know we're not supposed to. I read an article recently. It said about 60% of us do sneak candy into the movie. Opportunity for me to strengthen my integrity muscles? Yeah, it is. It's a small one, but it really is. Texting and driving. My wife and I, we have uh, three teenagers. Two of them are teen drivers. One's in the pipeline to be a teen driver. Probably like a lot of you who have teenage drivers, we've talked to our kids, we said, please, Promise me you're never going to text and drive. Can't even stand the thought of what could happen if you were a distracted driver. You know what? I'm on the road a lot for my job. I am all over the region. Lots of windshield time. I've got a smartphone. I hear it buzzing. Opportunity for me to strengthen my integrity muscle, to walk the talk, to do what I'm asking my kids to do. Yeah, it is. Let me ask you, what if you wanted to be a world-class marathoner? I mean, you wanted to run the Olympic marathon. What would you have to do? You'd have to practice a lot. Could you maybe take a weekend and run three, four, five hundred miles and be ready? No, of course not. It would take a sustained effort on your part Lots of practice, lots of training. You know, I really think the same thing is true for our integrity. If we want to be good at this, I mean really good, it's going to take practice. It's going to take training. It's going to take dedication on our part. And you know, I think these little integrity issues that we're facing all the time, these are great ways for us to train. If we're ever going to be ready for those big moments, I think we need to make sure we're training 
on these small ones. So what I want to leave you with is just a little training exercise. All right, now each of you has a card that looks something like this. On the card, it says integrity. Act with honesty in all situations. What I'd like to ask you to do is find a place where you can put that card, where you're going to see it at least twice a day. Kind of an ideal spot that occurs to me is maybe taping it up on the mirror in your bathroom. So let's say you do that. And there you are. You're at the end of the day. You're getting ready for bed. You're brushing your teeth. You're looking in the mirror, and you see your card. Integrity. Act with honesty in all situations. I want to ask you to think about the decisions and the choices you made during the day, the actions that you took. And are they in alignment with that card? Are they a reflection of what's on that card? And I want to ask you to do that for 66 days. And the reason why we've selected 66 days is because research says that's how long it takes the average person to create new habits. So let me recap. I'm going to ask you to work really hard for the next 66 days on your integrity. Again, making sure those decisions and choices, those actions that you're taking are in alignment with, on, with what's on that card. And remember, this is a training exercise for our integrity. If our integrity is going to be a foundation of our personal brand, we need to make it as strong as we possibly can. And if we can pull this off for 66 days, we may have done something pretty special. Let me share this feedback with you. It says, 66 days ago, you spoke to us regarding personal branding and the 66-day challenge. Every day when I leave my home, I see my brand hanging next to the door. I remember that the choices I make need to be reflective of the legacy I want to leave, and that my choices are always in my control. 66 days later, I'm a much different person than I was at the beginning of the challenge. My outlook, mindset, and approach are dramatically altered, and I intend to keep growing better from here. Hannah took the 66-day challenge. Now I'm challenging you. Let's give it 66 days. Let's work on this training for our, our personal brand. Thank you.